Life and death depend on this discourse. That's what makes the Gita special. That's what is happening on the battlefield. Beautiful, breathtaking, real. Uh, I'm saying mind lives in hierarchy. Okay. So uh, I have. So there are some social reformers, and then there are some spiritual mystics. So, is there any difference between both? If a social reformer is uh, working from a right center, no, they both are same. You cannot. Then, you cannot be a. You cannot be a true social reformer. without uh, being spiritual at heart and if you are indeed spiritual then your existence will definitely result in social reform so at their best places these two are one however these two are not necessarily one because you have social reformers of all hues and shades and you have spiritual masters of all kinds so i said that their best place these two are one the 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 true spiritual teacher will also be a true social reformer but if we are talking of uh, you know run of the mill kinds then these two can be very distinct because you have had many social reformers who knew nothing of spirituality and that's the reason why the kind of reforms they wanted to bring only proved divisive and counterproductive and uh, problematic as history has shown similarly there have been mystics and all who had uh, no intention towards social reform hmm? their works to have uh, not only not brought uh, illumination but has uh, actually uh, acted to to create a lot of confusion so you can know the the real social reformer by this that at his core he will be a sage and if he is not a sage at his core then the social reform he is bringing in is just some kind of uh, partisan agenda or uh, or communal agenda or something hmm? um, similarly the great teachers who say that we are concerned only with our own enlightenment and uh, we give two hoots to the state of the society um, we are not social reformers we are spiritual teachers uh, such people cannot be genuine spirituality sans compassion is not possible enlightenment as a personal event is a great delusion hmm when there is no personal bondage 
When there is no personal rebirth, how can there be personal liberation? The false self is something of a network. It is not something personal or unique to you. It's a network. It's a network and we all are nodes in that network. One node cannot be liberated by itself in isolation. Therefore, the real spiritual person will have to be, by compulsion, a social reformer. It's a compulsion because you cannot have personal enlightenment. You are here to dismantle the entire network, not just your own little personal node. Therefore, the real spiritual teacher will have to, as said compulsorily, remain an avid social reformer all his life. Sir, uh, we have two people in the past century, uh, Yuji Krishnamurti and J. Krishnamurti. So, one, uh, J. Krishnamurti, sir, was a social reformer and uh, uh, did his work for people for more than 60 years. And on the other hand, Yuji was not into these kinds of things. So, you are saying compulsorily a spiritual man uh, have to be a social reformer. And then comes one more hierarchy that man, that my mind always tracks that two words. I don't know much about those two words, but still I want to ask. Jivan uh, Mukt and Videh Mukt. So, I don't know much about it, but uh, can I know something about that? See, if uh, you are to talk in terms of hierarchy, the spiritual teacher comes first, the social reformer comes later. Hmm? First thing. The mind is the first thing. The world is an extension of the mind. You do not say that the world exists and the mind emerges from it. That would be sheer materialism. The mind is the central thing and the word projects itself from it. So, society, which is the world, obviously comes later. Spirituality, which deals with the mind, obviously comes first. So, that's the thing. Now about Jeevan Mukta and Videya Mukta. Among these two, the Jeevan Mukta is the highest that one can aspire for. Hmm? Who is Videya Mukta? The one who is free either of the body or along with the body. Hmm? It can be interpreted either way. The one who is free along with the body. The body is there, but he is free. Or the one who is free of the body. That is the Videh Mukta. Higher than Videh Mukta is uh, the Jivan Mukta. And Jivan Mukta is the, is the absolutely highest ideal India has had to give to the world. Because the world and all the religious streams in the world have always talked of the highest uh, um, being possible to you only after death. Hmm? If you have lived a great life, then you will have a great afterlife. So there is a heaven or Jannat or some other place waiting for you. Even in the, in the Indian uh, Puranic tradition, there is Swarg. 
But Vedant doesn't talk of uh, any swarg, it dismisses uh, them as uh, a child's fantasies, heaven and hell and such things. In fact, Vedant is the, the only philosophy that, uh, among the major philosophies that is, uh, major philosophies that lean uh, towards the religious side, I'm talking of those philosophies, uh, that dismiss all talk of heaven and hell. So, the highest that is possible is not after this life, the highest that is possible is in this life. Hmm? There is this beautiful um, bhajan by Kabir Sahib and uh, it says, Jeevan mukta soi mukta hai. There is no mukti, liberation, if you are not liberated even as you are alive. Hmm? There is no liberation if you are not liberated even when, even as you are breathing and alive. What is the definition of jivan mukt? The one who is free of jivan, life, even as he lives is called jivan mukt. The one who is free of life, even in the living state, is called Jivan Mukt. How is it a little higher than Videha Mukt? Because the Videha Mukt is free, principally, of the body. The Jivan Mukt is free of both the body and the mind. Because that which we call as life, for human beings, it's more of a mental happening than a physical happening. That which we call as life, for human beings, for our species, it is more mental than bodily. Therefore, Jivan Mukt is considered a bit higher than Videya Mukt, though if you go into the nitty-gritty of it, Jivan Mukt and Videya Mukt have to be one. You cannot be free of the body if you are not totally free of the mind. So the Videya Mukt will have to be a Jivan Mukt, but then, you know, talking in a practical sense, the way these two words have been traditionally understood, Jivan Mukt is a, is a, is a higher, rather the highest state. Be free of life. In life. What is life for us? All these things, this, 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 all this is life, right? Be free of it. That's Jeevan Mukt. Jeevan Mukt. Not dead, living, breathing, but still free of all that he lives on, all that he eats, all that he relates to, the people he talks to, the money in his pockets, his, his past, his future, his body, his relationships, um, his aspirations, his hopes, his delusions. He is living in the middle of all of these and yet he is free of all of these. That's Jeevan Mukt. That's even Mukt. Okay. It's a great ideal. Please understand. Even the Buddha had to talk of uh, Pari Nirvana. Okay. Nirvana as if was not sufficient. Even the Buddha admitted that as long as there is the body and you are alive, bondages will remain. But uh, Vedant is far more optimistic, far more upbeat. It says, no, it is not necessary. Being a Jeevan Mukt is possible. You can be in the middle of it and yet be free of it. Hmm? So that's the pole star. That's what guides you along your journey. The Jeevan Mukta ideal. Are you getting it? I do not know whether it is attainable. But just the fact that, that it even mentally exists is so very comforting and so very empowering. That life is not meant to be spent in grudges, in trivia, in all the petty things. 
you can live as the Jeevan Mukt. It is possible. In fact, uh, our friend Shubhankar here, he remembers only a few bits from the uh, Upanishadic treasure trove. And out of them there is one on the Jeevan Mukt. He will narrate it for us right now. Name Jeev iti gyatva sa Jeevan Mukt uchyate. It's so beautiful. You know, he, he was a lad and this was like eight, ten years back and uh, we took him to one of our shivers, our camps hmm? and he was someone who was that typical Anglophile, forget Sanskrit, he could not even speak Hindi properly. Hmm? <clears throat> I mean, our Darius speaks better Hindi than Shubhankar used to do, eight or ten years back. So, so I take him there and straight away I give him something in Sanskrit to understand, remember and recite. And uh, that was the, <clears throat> that was the Jeevan Muk chapter from Daribhu Gita. And this was the definition of the Jeevan Muk. And somehow it has happened that uh, he has forgotten most of the things, but this he has remembered. Hmm? And it, such things never happen coincidentally. There is always something behind them. So he has continued to remember this. Hmm? The one who knows he is not a Jeev, a person, is called Jeevan Mukt. Na me jeev. I am not a jeev. I am not a person. Gyatva knows this. Sa jeevan mukt uchyate. He can be called, he is called jeevan mukt. Hmm? So, a decade back I spoke extensively on it. Hmm. I suppose uh, for today this much is enough, right? Once you, once you start living in the constant understanding that the person you appear as is not what you are, you are Jeevan Mukt. Then all the things related to the person and the life of the person become, uh, become a kind of uh, uh, entertainment to you. Uh, that's not the right word, but um, just do get the drift. Hmm? The person has a life. The person um, has a world. There is a personality. All these things become something of a joke to you. That's when you are free of, free of everything that can um, contain you. You have disappeared. I think we move on to the next question. No, that's Jeevan Mukti. Yeah.